Okay, obviously the title is a bit of a joke here. It's not factually true, and it's not accurate to say that gamers are even a unified class in the first place, but at the same time, jokes are often born of something real. World-famous comedian Russell Peters once said that comedy is about telling the truth in a funny way. And while it would be absurd to pretend that gamers by and large exist as an oppressed class, it would be accurate to say that the industry and community beneath it are attacked regularly for reasons that have absolutely no basis in scientific fact and come from all angles of the political spectrum. Not too long ago, there was a narrative pushed by prominent right-leaning politicians that video games were responsible for actual tragedy. This, unfortunately, has become a predictable response when something horrific occurs in the real world, and it has periodically cropped up time and time again in the aftermath of a national spotlight on violence in general. That idea is completely untrue. I won't rehash exactly what I have now covered probably three times in total each time it happens, but suffice it to say there is an abundance of research to discredit the claim that video games are in any way, shape, or form responsible for significant acts of real-world violence. Here's the problem, though. While one side of the political aisle has been predictably blaming an innocent hobby in the wake of tragedy to obfuscate discussion of actual legitimate issues, the other side has simply been apparently, reorganizing their rhetoric and accusations so as to do the exact same thing, just arguably in an even more incompetent and malicious way than their predecessors. The main focus for today is a research paper published by the Gina Davis Institute on Gender in Media, the Oak Foundation, and Promundo. It is a study of violent activity in media, character behavior, character diversity, player behavior, societal impact, and a whole bunch more. But to distill this monstrosity into its most basic form, there are a couple of paragraphs I need to read. First one, quote, When it comes to violence in video games, a recent experimental study finds that boys are more likely than girls to identify with game characters, and players of violent-only games are more likely to identify with game characters than players of non-violent games. 49. Video game play is also associated with higher rates of aggression and violence for boys and men. 50. That's an important one. As well as decreased empathy, another important one, towards others. 51. End quote. Notice how I read the citation numbers, because that's very important, and I'll be coming back to that. Next paragraph to read, quote, What are boys and young men being exposed to that is toxic in online gaming spacing, and why does this matter? They are mostly seeing white male players enacting hyper-violent masculinity through violence and gun use. The ubiquity of white male violence in video games must be called out in light of mass tragedy. White extremist violence and white male police violence against people of color. Video games in many ways mirror the worst of US violence, and as such we must ask how they normalize it, and how they may contribute to re-traumatizing those exposed to such violence directly and indirectly." End quote. And my god, that is an idiotic paragraph to have to read especially when I make mistakes and have to read it three times over. Wow. So keep this in mind, as defined in this paper and explicitly stated in its contents, toxic masculinity is upheld by seven core pillars, one of which is violence and aggression. Therefore, a claim that video games produce, foster, or exacerbate toxic masculinity is a claim that they produce, foster, or exacerbate violent behavior. Sound familiar? Different keywords, different framing, but fundamentally the exact same argument as their political rivals even just a few months prior. Hopefully you can start to get a sense of what this paper is really trying to say right now, and the real reason it was crafted, but we're not done. Last paragraph for context, and then I'll be done, I promise, because reading this stuff is never fun, it's tedious and super annoying. I know that, and I apologize, but it's necessary to build out our foundation before moving on. Quote, Researchers find that male gamers who play explicit video games are more likely to think of women as objects and are more likely to harass women. 55. Furthermore, men who play video games are more likely to accept certain myths than men who do not play. 56. The more boys play video games, the lower their empathy for female victims of violence, especially for boys who identify more strongly with violent game characters. 57. End quote. You will notice that I've blanked or altered certain specific words. That is because the automated systems will detect and sometimes punish a video simply for saying them with any frequency, and I have no desire to have that happen. I will have every single one of these sources linked down below for those who want to read them. So let's get to the good stuff. Remember those citation numbers? They matter. Why? Because they link to specific bits of research in the end notes, and that research... Well, let's take a look at it. If we search the paper for the word Bushman, not a word, actually, a name, we find two separate papers he participates in used to support these claims of gaming and violence, particularly items 49 and 57. Well, fun fact, B. Bushman, also known as Brad Bushman, has been forced to outright retract not one, not two, but three of his scientific papers while significantly altering a fourth. 
Let me read a paragraph from the most recent retraction notice. Quote, Although Bushman remains a prominent voice in a highly contentious field, prompting numerous media to consult him after mass tragedy or violent acts, he's retracted two papers, one following an investigation at his institution, the Ohio State University OSU, which prompted OSU to strip his co-author of her PhD, end quote. And yes, if we look further, his co-author lost her PhD after a forced retraction of her paper on shooter video games when it was determined by an investigation that there was academic misconduct and data manipulation. While it is true that Bushman was cleared in this particular case, he went on to retract multiple further papers and significantly alter yet another, which should call into question the entire validity of this report. Let's take a look at a couple more people here. Another person listed on item 57 is Gabby Adini, but this 2016 study was debunked more recently because it failed to account for certain randomization factors. I can't prescribe any specific motive here or intent, but the study is thoroughly debunked and thus its findings have been invalidated. From the conclusion of this reanalysis, quote, in the current article, we reanalyzed data from Gabby Adini et al 2016 to determine how strongly the data support links between sexist games and reduced empathy toward women among adolescents. Our re analysis raised concerns about the strength of the evidence. Thus, our reanalysis joins an increasing body of literature that suggests there may be little link between sexism in games and sexism in real life." End quote. Not finished. On item 49, we can see Anderson C. and the joint Bushman study from 2010. Yeah, that one was also debunked, or re-examined, because of bias error. Here's a quote. First, we detect substantial publication bias in experimental research on the effects of violent games on aggressive effect, affect, and aggressive behavior. Second, after adjustment for bias, the effects of violent games on aggressive behavior in experimental research are estimated as being very small, and estimates of effects on aggressive affect, I always get those confused, are much reduced. In contrast, the cross-sectional literature finds correlations that appear largely unbiased. Third, experiments meeting the original author's criteria for methodological quality do not yield larger adjusted effects than other experiments, but instead yield larger indication of bias, indicating that perhaps they were selected for significance, end quote. In other words, it was either botched or manipulated, maybe both. Now, this original paper might have an impressive total number of endnotes, but when you really dig in, there isn't much there from a scientific perspective. In fact, some of the citations are streamers or the Twitch press website itself. There are op-eds or general gaming press news articles about diversity and inclusion. And I understand that the point of this entire paper is to highlight problems with video game character design and action patterns, but that falls apart completely when you claim that there is a connection between activity and behavior that does not exist. Let's just quickly showcase this study right here that directly contradicts their entire premise on victim blaming and empathy. I won't read the whole thing, right? I've already done enough of that and the scientific mumbo jumbo is not exactly easy to digest and it's not really easy to read either, but effectively two groups of players were subjected to video game content and the experimental group who was given the harmful media, Grand Theft Auto gameplay, ended up having a lower acceptance of these issues, meaning an increased sense possibly of consideration and empathy, which is the exact opposite of what the original paper is trying to pretend. There is no shortage of emerging literature to debunk this narrative. From 2019 and 2020, there are studies that disprove the entire premise of the previous scientific method on this topic and disprove a link between violent games and violent behavior. From 2014 and 2015, studies debunking the idea that sexism in a game creates sexism in a player, and even crime statistic evaluations where it is shown, categorically, that violent games reduce violent criminal behavior, which again is the exact opposite of what these consistent attacks want us all to believe. Gamers are not the most oppressed class in a technical sense, but one thing is true. Gaming has been attacked from all angles of the political spectrum for identical reasons. One side obfuscates their intention by cloaking the topic in an air of righteous fury at mass tragedy. The other side hides their agenda by sprinkling in keywords like toxic masculinity or diversity and inclusion. But make no mistake, their actual message is fundamentally the same. Video games cause behavior to degrade. Video games affect player personality in a detrimental way, as well as real world action. Therefore, video games are bad. The message is the same, they just go about saying it in radically different ways. The current most recent instance, a paper so pathetically ill-constructed and sourced, it should qualify as misinformation. But honestly, that tag is apparently reserved for dissidents like myself rather than the prestigious institutions who are simply trying to modify the gaming space and oust the toxic masculinity. It's a phantom cause built on lies, predicated on deception, and it's just tiring to hear it over and over and over again while the only real change is a few buzzwords.
In the end, gamers are not oppressed in a legitimate sense right now, not in the United States anyways. They sure as hell are in China. But this kind of fraudulent attack on the world of gaming is a farce and should be rightly criticized for what it actually is. Academic and especially professional dishonesty. But that's it. If you want to support, please check out the links down below. I'm helping promote a Kickstarter right now, so there's that. Also a link to Odyssey, which is a YouTube platform alternative. I have bi-weekly exclusive videos over there, so check that out. There is Locals, $5 a month to support the channel, basically like Patreon. Another gaming YouTuber to check out, merch, social media, etc., etc., but I'll cut it there and stop rambling. As always, thank you all for watching, and have a nice night.